Hey gents and welcome to my module on posture type and today we're going to be talking about lordosis. Now lordosis is probably the most common posture type that is directly linked with particularly lower back pain. However, the thing with lordosis is that it's very easy just to focus on the lower back because that's where we're suffering with it. However, that won't give us the full picture and today I want to kind of explain how it works in the overall context of your spine and posture and what's causing the pain and of course how to fix that. So as we can see here um, from <laughs> a terribly drawn um, illustration that, let's move the camera, um, that our friend here who has a very sad face because he's in a lot of pain because of his lordosis. Now, again, anatomically, I'm very, very off here, but of course, we're just gonna focus here on, we're gonna assume this curve is the lower back, uh, the lower, the lumbar spine. And this triangle, or this off-center triangle here, is the pelvis. Now, the two are vital when we think about our lordosis, because like I said, it's not just the lower back. Now also, lordosis doesn't just go downwards and has a knock-on effect downwards, it also goes upwards, and again, usually causes that rounding of the shoulders and the upper back, which is called kyphosis. Now, again, I don't want to start going too far up, I just want to stick to within our, um, within the lower back and pelvis here and give you a bit of an explanation as to what's going on, why it's causing pain, and of course, how to fix it. So, first thing you can see here, we've this very, we ex hyper extended lower back posture. Now, we are, our spine isn't a straight line, it's, it's in an S shape anyway, but when we have lordosis, then we have this over exaggeration, this hyper arch of the lower back. Now, the very first thing that has a, that impacts that will be the pelvis. And as you can see here, the pelvis is tipping forward. Now, in a normal or normal posture, healthy posture, good posture type situation, that pelvis should be level. And a lot of the times you'll be able to see this, um, the very first thing is that a, your jeans, clothes, trackies, whatever, the rim of them, they'll actually go down at an angle. Now, if you have a particularly large belly, then you know that's going to happen anyway. But if your, you know, tummy's in reasonably trim, and just have a look and see what way your trousers are sitting. If they tip forward again, they're usually going to wrap around the waist. So that's a bit of a giveaway uh, as to uh, as to your posture type if you're not too sure. No. So why does it cause so much pain and? A, well, again, there's a lot going on, it, and unfortunately, it's not just the lower back. Now, why do we have lordosis? Um, it, it can it can really be a million and one reasons. Uh, however, sometimes that line of thinking isn't necessarily the best because you start kind of going down this route of chicken or the egg, which came first. And the reality is, does it actually matter? A lot of the times it doesn't because we're more, or you should be more, focused on the solution and the fix rather than the cause. Now, if the cause is something that you do regularly, then yeah, of course, then we're obviously gonna to start to look at that. However, that is more uh, further along in the rehab cycle in that uh, your technique becomes much better in whatever you're doing, if it's sport or if it's lifting weights or if it's just general movement, then your mechanics are going to be naturally better anyway. So um, the cause of the initial cause of your lordosis might actually be fixed just by going through what I'm going to go through today anyway. So you, you, again, you don't have to go down that route of thinking. All that we know now is that we have it and we're going to fix it. And that's, um, and that's what, again, that look forward looking mentality is going, to, uh, is going to stand you in good stead here. So um, unfortunately with all things with the spine, it's never just one thing. And uh, the, the, this is definitely no exception. So in terms of pain, why do we have pain? Um, we could have a couple of reasons, a couple of reasons. So like I said, down here in uh, the lower back, there's going to be a lot of compression forces because the, sh the spine is shortened on the back. Now, a lot of the time uh, that will put 
forward forces on the discs and that's why discs can slip or prolapse or bulge um, because they're they're not sitting flat they're sitting off center so one side's been compressed and the other side squeezes out and um, a lot of the times when you have slipped discs um again it doesn't always have to mean pain i know a lot of you guys have said oh i bulge discs i've slipped discs well okay but does it, what does that actually mean in a day-to-day -day life you know a lot of people might have slipped and bulged discs but they never had an mri to check so they don't actually know but they live pain free so just because you have slipped discs doesn't necessarily equal pain because it just could be pressing out but because we're unaware of it it's not actually uh, or it might be impinging on anything it mightn't actually cause uh, much physical pain but and long-term lordosis will more than likely cause pain because the, um, the spine on the back here, uh, the vertebrae, has all these facet joints uh, sticking out. So we can only ever extend a certain amount before they compress on top of each other. And that is what causes a lot of this lower back pain. And if the discs bulge out, then it could also then impinge on a nerve. And we uh, usually the sciatic nerve, if it's down because the sciatic nerve attaches in a, or originates from the lumbar area and um, so a lot of that pain uh, discal and um, and I guess bone uh, bone or like maybe arthritic pain maybe a bit of inflammation can uh, can originate from this uh, from this posture type now uh, muscular pain again there's a, in the muscular there's a lot going on so because there is a lot of uh, force going on the back these muscles the the, the back muscles the erectors um, the extensors and even the deeper ones things like your multifidus they're all getting shorter and shorter and shorter and really really strong so a lot of people think because they're in lordosis they're weak no not at all in fact you're so strong you're able to pull your bones out of line that's that's what's happened here it's just so that the, it doesn't actually serve us in, in, in any way so we become very strong very short uh, in the musculature in the back here which then has the opposite effect on the front here so the front the anterior core muscles uh, they get lengthened and weakened because they're begin because the pelvis is starting to now tip forward again all these muscles they all attach in and around different points of the pelvis here so they're just like a pulley system and if some become too tight the pulley system is going to pull the pelvis out of the way again this has a more of a knock-on effect so uh, if we imagine this is the the front and this is the back so now down here we have the shorter internal muscles called our hip flexors and they're going to get very short and very very tight again contributing to this uh, anterior pelvic tilt uh, that's also another term for lordosis anterior pelvic tilt, tilt posture uh, on the back then where we have our glutes there although the glutes wrap around uh, the, the back of the pelvis like that then they're all being lengthened and pulled and weakened and not uh, made do their job as they're designed to do. And again, even more of a knock-on effect. Again, I know that this does seem like it's getting worse and worse and worse. However, if to know why you're doing the exercises to fix this, it's important to know what you need to do and why you're doing it. Uh, again, and so if we go down here so these would be the quads big thick powerful muscles and these would be the hamstrings so again as you can imagine the same thing is happening so our quads because the pelvis is tipping forward and uh, the legs will start kind of hyper hyper extending and bow legged as we arch it back the hamstrings then are being pulled upwards and they're constantly under tension. So a lot of you guys say, oh, I have really tight glutes and I have really uh, tight hamstrings. Well, again, those are probably the symptoms, not the actual cause. Because the pelvis is out of line, the glutes are being pulled and lengthened and constantly under tension. So the last thing they want to do is be stretched, like a muscle that's been like, under tension all day long, and then you want to pull it even further. It's not going to work same with the hamstrings and then the quads 
are going downwards as well and they're getting really really tight and again that can hyperlock the knees so you end up with this really kind of vicious circle out of it going constantly around and around and around so it does seem to get a hell of a lot worse before it gets a hell of a lot better unfortunately now um what we're looking to do is uh two things we're looking to increase strength in the core so what's commonly known as the core again i like to think of the core as pretty much everything from our ribs down to our pelvis so we want to strengthen these uh, let's call it st back here we want to stretch and mobilize the lower back because again they're not going to have a huge range of movement here you want to start mobilizing the pelvis you want to uh, and increase the flexibility of the hip flexors on the back then as this pelvis will start going back around into neutral now we don't have to do much with the hamstrings and quads they will they will kind of come good automatically anyway but as the pelvis comes back around more to its neutral position then we can start working and strengthening the glutes and again that's all going to start bringing the pelvis back to neutral and making this a little bit less arched not this hyperextended type posture so uh, as you can see there's, a, there's so much going on here it's it's not a simple question of stretch your lower back strengthen your core do this do that do that it, you literally have to do everything now the next question becomes well what should i do again valid question and after this i'm going to post uh, some really simple but really effective routines that will incorporate all this so you want to do hip extension work um, hip uh, flexion work hip mobility work lower back mobility work and core strength work. <laughs> now it does seem like an awful lot of work however a lot of movements um, when done right incorporate all these things at the same time so even if you're just standing there what you want to do I want you to stand up and just see how you stand normally and then more than likely your pelvis will be like this if you're watching this video just tuck the pelvis back under right? again if i stand hyper extended like this i bring my you can you can literally see my chest kind of drawing down again this has a massive impact higher up in the spine and the mid back as well however i don't want to get a little bit convoluted and talk about too much because that doesn't necessarily it's not the priority um again unless you've upper back shoulder neck pain then that's going to be a different module however just for today so if you stand there and you just tuck that pelvis under you you might notice a few things first of all the lower abs are the transverse abs uh, the transverse abs are uh, a wall of muscle that attach in underneath the rib cage and down into the front of the pelvis now like i said those fellas are being pulled and stretched and lengthened so they become very very weak and that's why we have this uh, you know our tummies kind of stick out a lot but when we tuck the pelvis under you'll feel them you'll feel them kicking in all of a sudden now they should be pretty much like that all the time you're only really noticing it now because they're well doing what they're meant to do now as again tuck that pelvis back under again you don't have to slouch you know it's it's just that midway tuck under what you'll also notice is that you might have much less pain on the lower back you might feel a lot less compression again what well, we've we've just taken a little bit of pressure off the vertebrae and pulled ourselves back into neutral here and that's all we're aiming to do really is to move around in neutral like the vast majority like we can flex bend extend you know we can do all these things but the vast majority of our day-to-day -day movements like when we walk um, you know when we lift or when we play sport or whatever we want to be in neutral so even if like i know a lot of you guys play golf so if you you, you swing and as you follow through you might, might be a bit of extension cool but as you come back then boom you're back in neutral so the vast majority you don't always have to be in neutral 
the vast majority of the time should be spent in neutral. And that's, so um, when that is the case, then we have a proper functioning core. So it's not just a case of, I have a strong core because I can do a million sit-ups. A strong core means that we can walk around in good posture. It functions well. It doesn't have to do billions of sit-ups or crunches or hold a plank for 10 hours. It just needs to work as it's meant to work, as it's designed to work and not cause pain. Um, so we, uh, the transverse abs, the internal and external obliques, they attach, in down to, uh, they attach from the rib cage down into the pelvis as well. Like I said, all those muscles are all being lengthened and stretched and they become very, very weak and not necessarily inactive. That's our, uh, another phrase that you might see in the fitness industry is um, amne muscle amnesia. <laughs> <laughs> we love uh, we love a headline in this industry, don't we? Um, they they do know how to work. It's just that they're not being worked optimally. They're not being used for what they're meant to be doing, and that's what it is. Um, so again, when something doesn't work enough, or it's not able to work for whatever reason, something else has to, right? Because we have to get up. We have to move. So in this case, the lower back kicks in, and the problem with that is that the lower back, those muscles, like I said, the, the rectus spinae, the, the extensors, the lats as well to a certain extent, uh, maybe the lower traps, not so much, but uh, uh, certainly multifidus and things like that. Those muscles, they're actually not designed to move. They're more of a stabilizing muscle. So most of our movement, so if we'd imagine our, pel um, our hip sockets are here, then most of our movements should hinge from the pelvis, not from higher up in the lower back. It should be in the hips here, not up here. Now, obviously you can't see me because of uh, where I'm set up, but hopefully that makes more sense. So we're designed because the, the, hip, the hip socket is a, is a ball and socket joint. It's 360 degree, it's designed to move. But because we get very, very tight and very, very inactive within the hips, we have to move somehow. And that's a lot of the times how our lower back takes over. It becomes very, very strong over years and years and years. And it becomes the prime mover, whereas the hips then becomes the stabilizer. And that's all wrong. And that's why all these things uh, uh, come to the forefront. And that's why we, we're in a lot of pain. So strengthening here but then look letting starting to mobilize the lower spine and get tension out of the muscles in the lower back we're literally having to coax them to say it's okay lads calm down relax we don't need to you know overwork here something else is going to take up the slack and how long that takes it's how long's a piece of string everyone will react different everyone has different uh, levels of ability. Uh, your lower doses might be, might be as extreme. Uh, some people will have better body awareness than others. There, there's so many external factors um, that I, I can't go through. However, it does work. How long it'll take, the answer is I don't know. And to be honest, nobody knows. If they are telling you that they do know, then they're lying and they're trying to sell you something. Right now, I'm just showing, telling you the truth of the matter and the reality of it. Um, so we're looking to so, so add strength, and but more so not just strength. Don't think of strength. Think of function. All right, we're looking to add better function in the front and the back here. We're we're starting to reverse their roles and bring them to what they're designed to do. The same here down in the lower uh, the lower pelvis. So we are looking to bring more strength, but better function from the glutes and the same from the hip flexors. So we're gonna need a lot of uh, mobility work and um, a lot of flexibility within the hip flexors so that we're able to say kick our foot behind um, our backs, like backward, but without arching, right? We want to be able to move our femurs, want to be able to move our femurs, our thigh bones, independently of our pelvis. And that's how we're designed to move. And that's a very, very tricky thing. And again, it can take time. However, that is the way forward. Again, when I, I won't really do 
add does it kind of unnecessary to add quad and hamstring work in no it's you know it's always great to have strong legs of course however when these when the pelvis comes back to normal or sorry back to neutral the hamstrings are going to feel more flexible anyway because they're just going to go ah oh. again they're just oh we don't <laughs> The knees won't be so hyper-locked because the quads are tight and the hamstrings are being pulled. And everything just comes back into that normal, healthy, pain-free position. And that's the position, uh, what we call neutral, is that we want to strengthen in. So every exercise we do, so from our planks um, to not so much, um, not so much crunches, and I, and I hate adding them in anyway, um, but even like overhead presses, uh, rows, squats, deadlifts, everything, getting your spine into neutral and learning how to hold that position whilst then adding weight is then how we progress and move forward. We're then starting to uh, literally reprogram our brain, it's called imprinting new neural pathways, into this better position, into this more optimum way of moving that is pain-free, that's allow you to get stronger, fitter, more active, and just generally feeling better. And of course, posture-wise, anytime we have good posture, we just look great anyway, right? You know, the shoulder, you know, shoulders back again. I hate that, I hate that term, but just the shoulders, just drawn back, but with the ribs down. There we go, and that slight arch in that lower back, not this overextended arched type posture. It's a really powerful looking thing. It's a really awesome, um, aesthetically, it, and it just kind of, I don't know, for me anyway, it radiates confidence, you know, someone with great posture rather than kind of looking meek and, and, uh, and timid. So the exercise I'm gonna to put together, how often should you do them? So like I said, that's, we're gonna do everything here, and it's not as complicated as it sounds, the exercises, they do do everything, however, that's the next question. Should we train when we're injured? How much do we train when we're injured? What do we do? So on and so forth. Uh, that's gonna be in the next module and I'm gonna get right into that now. So uh, check that out. Uh, if you have any questions on this one, gents, um, get, hit me up in the comments. Uh, obviously happy to help. And like I said, there'll be some videos and um, that will tick all your boxes here to, fit, to help fix your lordosis issues and ultimately get you back pain-free. Talk to you soon, take care, bye.